Hi everyone, little technical difficulties. Bear with me, just getting started. Welcome, Facebook Live. I'm looking forward to everyone joining me tonight. It is uh, a little after eight, so hello. And I'm working on my camera and my iPad, see if I can see what's going on live here. So give me just one second. Looks like we're getting all set up. Welcome, Dr. Rob Kiltz, uh, Fertile Fireside Chat. Still a little warm out there. Uh, and I got the fire off. And I'm uh, really grateful that everyone's joining me tonight. And I'm gonna try to answer as many questions as possible. And um, so rough road, this fertility journey, I know. And um, don't give up. Persistence and uh, mental attitude really can help on the crazy journey. And um, I know uh, how, how difficult this process is. Um, we see it every day in our support group and just people commenting out there. Um, we appreciate all the interests, the comments, the thoughts, the ideas are just helping us to communicate better. Um, there are some questions last week I didn't get to. Um, I'm gonna try to touch on some of those. So I appreciate the, the highs and shout outs from everyone. Um, we're really working diligently to share uh, a global different story, uh, helping uh, those uh, who don't need IVF. And many turn out not to need IVF. And my theory is that inflammation is the cause of all of our diseases. And infertility is just one of those diseases. And uh, if you're having problems uh, with uh, joint, skin, uh, arthritis, um, uh, asthma, uh, gastrointestinal disorders, um, these are just other signs and symptoms of inflammation. And that includes endometriosis. So all these things are really, really uh, hard to understand for so many of us. And as a fertility doctor, um, I wasn't taught any of these things. And most people in our fertility world don't believe that the immune system has much to do with infertility. Uh, I believe it is like the leading cause uh, for everything we know, both male and female infertility. So uh, the, the key here is, is that, um, and uh, I'm sorry if we may have, uh, let me just hang on everyone one quick second. I'm gonna, uh, all right, hope everyone's still with me. Again, uh, so uh, Natalie, how you doing? Amy, Jasmine, hello, hello, hello. Uh, Rachel and down the list, uh, really grateful to everyone. Uh, there were some questions last week about MTHFR um, and you gotta Google a little bit, look it up, but there's some evidence that possibly, and I'm gonna emphasize the possible, that uh, there are some thrombophilias where microvascular blood clots may occur if you have one of the, the, the gene defects in the MTHFR. In general, it's believed that unless your homocysteine is abnormal, uh, it likely is not an issue. But that said is if you do have an MTHFR gene uh, abnormality, uh, then treating with methylfolate and the ovavite through Theralogics contains that. Um, and, and also, uh, we do often add a little bit of aspirin, uh, Lovenox, to try to reduce that risk. A lot of it is just a generalized treatment, and there's a lot of controversy on that one, um, so take a look at that. Miss um, uh, uh, Stanton, treat insulin-dependent diabetic patients. Well, we don't turn anyone away because of a disease that you may also have at the same time. Um, I believe they're all interreacted. Uh, uh, and so absolutely we take care of uh, those on insulin for diabetes. We believe that ketogenic diet is one of the first things that all of us should be looking at. Uh, it's a little misleading the term ketogenic, I think. Uh, this is an anti-inflammatory diet. It's a high fat, low carb. And uh, I learned most of this by reading Gary Taub's book, Good Calories, Bad Calories. So if you haven't either listened to it or read it, highly recommend it. And uh, our keto expert, Maria Emmerich, she visited us last week and uh, really recommend 
you know, everyone should get out there and read her stuff, look at it. Um, but I started with Gary Tobbs, and this was an area that I didn't understand uh, at all uh, in, in in my past. Um, so, uh, you know, as again, as a as a standard American doctor, um, I too didn't understand it very well. How much um, the uh, uh, fertility journey is wrought with inflammation? It's mostly caused by our diet. Um, so, uh, I think it's real important that you all look at paleo, keto, and if you're a vegan or vegetarian, uh, there are ways to do it. Um, I recommend separating out your meals uh, and make sure you add a lot more fat to it. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen the Netflix movie, uh, The Magic Pill, I highly recommend it. There's so much out there to help you on that journey to understand it better. Um, and again, Share this with your family, your friends, your neighbors. Uh, keto is king. It's the way to eliminate so many diseases. And if you happen to want to lose some weight, um, uh, then this is the way to do it. But um, our body is not meant to be a skinny bean pole. It's meant to have some fat because fat is the fuel for all of us 24-7, 365. We never utilize sugar nor amino acids as the primary fuel for the mitochondria. Um, and and uh, also, uh, as I see Ashley mentioned and others, that we have an IVF giveaway every month, um, but we also have full financial plans for everyone. We really work to make this the most affordable uh, uh, in the country, and we know that in many other parts of the world, it's even more expensive than we offer it. Um, let's see, uh, Chelsea and Nicole, how you doing? Opinion on taking Clomid and metformin, uh, 50 and 500 milligrams. So Clomid, uh, like letrozole, are oral pills to help uh, stimulate ovulation, mostly for those with uh, not ovulating, we call it anovulation, uh, or infrequent ovulation. Uh, also polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I call metabolic syndrome, which is basically prediabetes. And uh, Clomid, 50 to 100 milligrams, even up to 150 milligrams, helps a lot of women ovulate uh, naturally with that, without IUI or anything else. Uh, but often, if it's not working, you should add an ultrasound and possibly an HCG or Avidil trigger shot. And metformin uh, can be very helpful, either 500 up to 2,000 milligrams a day, um, especially uh, if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, anovulation, uh, metabolic syndrome. And, Remember, keto is first. Um, if keto is too hard for you, try some paleo. And it's just a high fat, a little bit more carbs. I believe we need to eliminate seeds, nuts, grains, and most dairy, uh, butter, eggs, cream, uh, and some cheeses. But you gotta be careful on cheese. There's a lot of sugar in there. And remember, seeds and nuts are mostly sugar. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, CBD, uh, Sarah Ofri, uh, uh, a long post on CBD oil. Uh, you know, endometriosis is an intra-abdominal pelvic inflammation, likely caused by inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, and so I believe it can be really helped, again, with keto. Uh, intermittent feasting or fasting I call it intermittent feasting where you eat one meal a day at night, morning and night, separate the events and, and really simplify the, the carbs if you're gonna eat any vegetables. I like to stay away from most fruit, if not all fruit and most vegetables because I think they're not good for us. Uh, CBD oil, uh, cannabinoid oil without THC uh, is an anti-inflammatory. I believe it's really helpful. There's a lot of evidence that it helps many uh, immunologic disorders, we call them autoimmune. Uh, I personally think our immunologic or inflammatory reactions are to plant antigens, phytochemicals, fermentation, all the bacteria and yeast that comes with all that high carbohydrate diet um, and glycation from glucose. And remember, if it's a fruit fiber vegetable, that's sugar, it's crazy, and seeds and nuts, have all these lectins and all these other phytochemicals and antigens that are not good for us. They damage our bodies. And uh, if you uh, haven't seen Dr. Gundry's stuff, the uh, plant paradox, he's got some really great stuff. 
I personally recommend more of a fat animal-based diet. He looks more towards a plant-based, uh, but if, again, if you separate them out and add more fat, it's gonna be much better for you to reduce the inflammation in your body, to help heal so many, many things going on. Um, Ashley, how you doing? Uh, Chelsea, uh, Lisa. Um, so yes to Clomid. We use a lot more letrozole now, by the way, Famara. We think it has a, a, a less anti-estrogenic effects on the uterine lining. Many women with Clomid will thin out the lining and that's gonna adversely affect their chances for pregnancy. So, and we do have some people using Clomid uh, and letrozole, trigger shot for even IVF. Fewer eggs, fewer embryos, but still could be a very good success and a lot less costly when you're looking at the medications. Typically, under 35 is going to be a better candidate uh, than that. So, um, uh, so CBD, again, helpful for a lot of inflammation and endo, endo, endo. Remember, infertility and repetitive pregnancy losses, maybe even early pregnancy delivery, maybe all related to inflammation and CBD, LDN, keto, or home runs. Um, and, and CBD is simply a omega-3 fatty acid in many ways, but it's a phytochemical, like uh, if you think about um, aspirin as a, a herbal medicine, um, and all these anti-inflammatories all came from the plant world. Uh, over the last thousands and thousands of years, we've learned how to harness the good parts of the plant, but there are many bad parts of the plants that were getting in our bodies just because we eat a very high, remember that pyramid and the my plate. And if you haven't looked at the recommendations by the federal government for food, it's almost all carbohydrates and all plant material is sugar. Uh, uh, let's see, hypertensive patients, Rachel uh, Rodriguez, um, I'm not sure where the question came from, but absolutely we take care of everyone. And remember, hypertension, Dr. Corley lost on my keto diet, 40 pounds off hypertensive meds, off high cholesterol meds. So it's an amazing concept, but Kiltz is keto. I call it the K2C, Kiltz is keto cure. Uh, bacon, eggs, butter, beef, bam, baby. It's kind of an interesting, crazy concept, but ribeye steak, fatty as can be, with a little butter, uh, and some uh, Malden sea salt is, is, a, is a home run. And I did make a little about my ice cream. So if you just Google Dr. Rob Kiltz's ice cream uh, and also my TEDx talk has some good stuff about we're human Ferraris. Um, let's see, uh, are the chances of success improved when doing FET the cycle right after um, um, MC, a miscarriage? So, if a miscarriage uh, also may clean out the system a little bit more, if also doing a DNC, it may clean out the system a little bit more. And it, it may help improve implantation. Um, so um, there's some evidence that frozen embryo transfers do a little bit better than fresh, but there's some conflicting evidence that they're just, everyone should do it. We take it one by one. You want to individualize. Uh, so whenever we do uh, a, an, an egg retrieval or a harvest, uh, which is IV sedation, a vaginal ultrasound, has low risk, but remember nothing is no risk. The little bit of risk may be some vaginal bleeding where we might have to put a stitch in, that's very rare, uh, bloated ovaries, and very rare, you might need some fluid drain. But today, because we give Lupron trigger mostly and lower HCG, the risks really drop down significantly. Uh, Sarah P, how you doing? Allie Brandy, uh, uh, we're really grateful to everyone. And you know, this process doesn't work for everyone every time. And this is the hard part. And we don't have straightforward answers for most of us. But my belief, my bet is, it all comes back to inflammation, number one for every disease. Slow it down, <clears throat> get off the treadmill. When we heat up the body, we denature DNA, proteins, we damage our eggs, our sperm, our embryos, and the environment that that beautiful baby needs to grow in. And so whatever you're doing, even when you get pregnant, stay in the fertile keto mode. And that's a high fat, low carb, and even 
because most of us are carrying the extra weight. That's the weight for your baby. That's fuel for your baby. Uh, so don't push it, push it. Um, uh, time conception of failed, uh, Matthew, uh, recommend IUI before IVF. Um, so uh, if what you're doing at home isn't working and working with timed uh, intercourse cycles and if you're measuring your base body temperatures or you have one of the new uh, 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 watches that, that will track your, your, your temperature more accurately uh, or you're doing ovulation predictor kits, if those things aren't working, then IUI ups your odds. In general, though, we recommend adding either letrozole or Clomid with the trigger shot. That's going to up it a little bit better, and then IVF is going to be even better than that. It's your call on whether you go right to IVF or you try some IUIs in the meantime. I do recommend laparoscopy, hysteroscopy for silent endometriosis. It's so common. I just got a text the other day, two and a half weeks after laparoscopy, bingo, pregnant. So um, most people talk about endometriosis as not a, a significant cause of infertility, but I bet it's one of the leading causes. It's basically intra-abdominal pelvic inflammation. Uh, again, it's a crazy concept. I don't understand it, but um, it, is, it is very powerful. Uh, talk to your OBGYN, your fertility doctor, and listen, IVF costs a lot more than IUI or sex at home. Um, so this is something that many docs just say, mm, you don't have any symptoms. The leading symptom is silent. It's infertility, it's repetitive pregnancy losses, um, but it's not a mandatory thing. It's just an option that you have to choose whether you want to do IUI, IVF, and whichever way you want to go. I believe endometriosis affects the eggs, the sperm, the embryos, that sperm gets into the pelvic cavity and if there's a lot of inflammation, it's like pouring acid on the sperm, uh, the egg, and, and the embryo. So by excising it or vaporizing it if it's superficial uh, and, and looking for any other evidence of inflammation, excising small cysts around the tubes, on the uterus, there's a lot of inflammatory stuff going on inside our bellies and you all feel it, we all have had it, uh, hemorrhoids, uh, uh, varicoceles, uh, and, and pain, discomfort, irritable bowel, colitis, you just go down the list, it's there. And the intra-abdominal pelvic inflammation affects the kidneys, the liver, the gallbladder, the spleen, uh, the adrenals. And I believe this metabolic syndrome even causes polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, Hope everyone's doing well tonight and enjoying this great weekend. Um, let's see, uh, Vanna, uh, DHEA increased my TSH. How long until it stabilizes? You know, it's interesting. As we uh, add supplements, um, we do these treatments with injectables, with hormones, with estrogen. The TSH seems to get get away with all of us, and I think that there's a there's a stress component, uh, and we're watching it more carefully. But inflammation is the key, and um, thyroid disorder is really one of the earliest forms of inflammation that gets one of our uh, hormone organs. And I bet for men as much as women. Uh, so this is why CBD, low-dose naltrexone, uh, look up the uh, low-dose naltrexone book. Um, but it may take a few weeks to, for the thyroid hormones to stabilize, but check T3, T4, and thyroid antibodies. Uh, because that can also help explain what's going on. Uh, and if your TSH is a little high, a little low, you check your thyroid hormones, T3, T4, and the free levels, and you see they're in the normal range, it may be a laboratory measurement uh, uh, inaccuracy that really is that TSH. Quite often we'll add a little bit of, of uh, thyroid hormone, armothyroid, levothyroxine, or synthroid, 25 milligrams to start uh, more of an empiric dose. Um, so um, it, it can, be, can be helpful for some of those where, gee, nothing else is working and it's the thing to go ahead and, and, and test it out and see whether or not you're getting some benefit from it. Don't forget the hysterosalpingogram and uh, one, two to four weeks of antibiotics for the men and women for subclinical chronic inflammation, infection, 
uh, bacteria, yeast, even treating with some uh, diflucan uh, may be very helpful. I think there's a lot of, of uh, uh, candida uh, in all of us, uh, mostly because, again, we're eating a high carbohydrate diet. We're ingesting a lot of bacteria and yeast through the fruits and vegetables that we're eating, the grains that we're, we're eating are really uh, dangerous for us. Um, and uh, so, uh, let's see here. Good question from Miranda Estain. Uh, we're looking forward to your phone consultation, by the way. Uh, question on MS. Uh, Rory Williams, how you doing? Uh, so, if you read um, Terry Whale's book on multiple sclerosis and the Whale's Protocol, which is basically a paleo diet, a significant improvement in MS, but absolutely. It's just another immunologic disorder that contributes to infertility, repetitive losses, uh, diminished ovarian reserve, bad sperm. Um, and so absolutely, we take care of a lot of uh, men and women with MS. Um, it's just, again, it's another pre-diabetic, hyperglycemic, uh, although not diabetic. Um, and again, when, if you're eating a, an abundant variety of foods, a lot of that variety has a lot of toxins in the plant in the form of plant antigens. We're allergic to the food we eat and plant phytochemicals, uh, which is like you know, uh, ricin, um, uh, cocaine, and I mean, you just go down the list of all the things in, in plants. Latex. Uh, I'm sure no one's touching cocaine, but if you think of cocaine as just another plant phytochemical. And my bet is there are many, a huge list of phytochemicals that we're ingesting, arsenic, cyanide, in so many of the foods that, that we're eating. And again, it seems a little crazy, uh, but um, uh, I didn't believe any of it uh, 10, 15 years ago, but I talk more about it uh, than, than anyone I know. Uh, Sarah Weber, how you doing? Uh, and still, I'm ready. Uh, omegas, DHEA, ubiquinol, uh, royal jelly. And uh, I know that... Um, you know, there, there's a, a huge list of things we can all ingest. Occam's razor is simple. Keep it as simple as possible, as best you can. Each day, by the way, the more simple we put things in our bodies, and uh, remember, positive things in your mind every single day. Uh, listen or read something positive, uplifting, mind, body, smile. I've been doing that for about uh, 10, 15 years. I'm not on it all the time, but for me, it's, daily meditation and prayer, visualization, and if you haven't done a vision board, you gotta do one. Uh, and I know it's really, really, really difficult, uh, but do not, do not give up. And when you get down and you just can't do it anymore, take a break, step back, go for a walk in nature, listen to a really great storybook, tell your story. I do a tremendous amount of journaling. I journal, 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 always have my journal. Uh, not feeling good today, miserable day, hard day, ah, but truly we're alive and that's the gift and all these challenges are really just part of the universe's way of saying, okay, here's a puzzle for all of us to move forward with in the best way we can. Uh, so I, I, my intention is never never to say anything to, to hurt anyone, um, always want to be helpful. Um, and, but I know that it's really hard and I try to listen better and I always think about um, listen, learn, and love. That's really important for all of us each and every day. So uh, Casey, how you doing? And thankful to all of you guys out there for sharing the story um, and your stories. And when, when everyone uh, gathers on CMI Fertility, the village, or whatever village is out there that's sharing the challenge of infertility, repetitive losses, early and late losses, uh, you gain some insight from others. Uh, and so that's really important. And when we hear of the success rates, the success stories, I should say, uh, from others that have gone through it, we can imagine ourselves in the same shoes. Uh, and remember, we're all human beings on this crazy human journey. It is really, really, really difficult. Uh, bacon, where did I see that? Eat bacon, don't jog. Uh, it's really a great concept. And uh, there's some really good stuff out there. I stopped exercising about seven or eight years ago. I'm 62, I feel fantastic, I'm near high school weight. 
Uh, my, my brain is amazing and uh, I recommend no alcohol, uh, certainly no drugs, tobacco, uh, slow it down, stretching, tai chi, yoga, meditation, go for a walk, a light bike ride, but by heating up the body, it is not good. And I too uh, uh, read, uh, Jessica, thank you, the Eat Bacon, Don't Jog, and I think I shared it a few weeks ago, uh, how it blew my mind also. And um, we're all just got to keep at it. We're learning and sharing a new story. And when, when I realized that fruits and vegetables were no good for me and I stopped them along with got rid of grains, my body, my bowels, really became fantastic. And no one likes to talk about their bowels, but I'm telling you, it's the most amazing change when you get rid of fiber. Uh, get rid of the vegetables and the fruit. Now, if you're gonna eat some, simplify them, separate them, and maybe add some cream or butter and make a cream butter soup. And uh, don't forget bone broth. Uh, and I do a lot of, uh, uh, I had uh, beef bacon, eggs, and a little goose liver this morning for breakfast. I typically have one meal a day, usually at night, rest and digest. And I was seeing some ad today about, I do a lot of stand-up desks at, at home, and now it's the sit and on your bicycle while you're working all day. Remember, you're gonna need a hip replacement, a knee replacement, plus you're gonna cook your DNA, that causes DNA fragmentation in sperm and in eggs, my bet. It's heating up the body and you wanna cool it down. And Marie Emmerich's talked about cooling the body. Um, I really think a, a cool plunge is much better for our bodies than getting in the hot tub and the hot plunge, but cool the body down. And again, five things, and if, if you email me or text me, I'll try to send it out there. I'm, I'm gonna try to put it out on the portal for everyone. Uh, the five causes of all of our diseases, glucose from carbs, plant antigens, phytochemicals, fermentation, and exercise. Don't do it. The Lion King plan, what do they do a lot of? They rest, they nap, they don't exercise. No other animals except crazy human beings get on a treadmill uh, and go like this. Mm -mm. Eat less food. But when you exercise, you tend to get hungrier, you get heavier, and this concept that, that you too can like just change everything. I do no weightlifting, no sit-ups, nothing. Now, I get up and I get involved in life and share some stories. Even this craziness sometimes is, what the heck is this guy doing? Um, all right, so Maria's, Maria Emmerich, uh, uh, Maria Mind Body Health.com, and uh, she's really amazing. Kansas City, Rachel, how you doing? Kim, uh, to get my husband and myself to use her new hot tub. Oh, well, you know, you, you put your feet into the hot tub, and that's about it. And if you've already had your babies, you know, okay, but not when you're pregnant for sure, uh, but a little bit, but. I know I have a hot tub and I get in a little bit more, but um, I think too, it may not be so good for our joints and other, other thoughts. Um, let's see, Daniel Torres, a mosaic embryos, two duplicated segments on two chromosomes. I just don't think PGS, PGD testing is 100% accurate. It's a biopsy of the placental region uh, if you check out uh, Richard Paulson has a video out there with a, with a soccer ball with the black and white. And if you biopsy here, you're going to get one, one result over here, another. And I just don't think they're as accurate as we think. So the only way for an embryo to become a baby is to get in a uterus. You have to risk a failed pregnancy, a negative test, or a miscarriage. That's the challenge with this process. Um, Let's see, Kelly Neros, uh, three failed IUIs, mildly elevated DHEA. Uh, let's see, uh, normal adrenals, all of the labs, normal suggestions. So um, keto, 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 slow it down. Um, metformin uh, and, and ovacetol for sure. Um, and and, uh, and uh, if you're not using letrozole, uh, usually use 5 to 7.5 for five days with an overlap of between 
50 and 150 of either Gomel, Folistim, or Minipure. Um, you may use a little bit of low-dose HCG with the trigger shot. Uh, that may help. Uh, intralipids, um, that's a fatty infusion, reduces inflammation. Uh, the elevated DHA, DHEA may be related uh, uh, to all these antibodies uh, that are stimulated because of the high antigens in our body. So remember, plants come with a tremendous amount of antigens that we're allergic to, um, especially if you're blending them in a smoothie or a, or a juicing it or a shake. It's not good for you. Uh, micronizing these things help them get through the leaky gut. And, and uh, uh, Dr. Gundry talks a lot about uh, lectins uh, that basically damage the very sensitive skin of the GI tract. Remember, it goes from the outside to the inside and back to the outside. Uh, it's this about the size of a tennis court. It's very sensitive to sandpaper and Brillo pads, fiber. Um, alcohol, and remember, fermentation in the GI tract, in the colon, adding these probiotics is idiotic. Don't do it. Uh, so uh, I think those are some things that can really help, but uh, if just Clomid's not working, uh, injectable IUIs uh, can help with that a lot. And think about laparoscopy, hysteroscopy. You may want to try a little bit of maybe a, of, of a dexamethasone, uh, a steroid or prednisone, that may also be helpful for a lot of people with metabolic syndrome, which I think also has some elevated um, uh, uh, male uh, testosterone precursors. Um, let's see, uh, Yulia, how you doing? Uh, prime during laparoscopy cycle, absolutely. So uh, priming uh, with, with uh, human growth hormone, with... Um, uh, with DHEA, in those cases of diminished ovarian reserve, uh, uh, CoQ10, fish oil, vitamin D, folic acid. I recommend the Theralogix, Ovavite, Ovacetol, uh, and Keto, Keto, Keto. And recently we've been looking at either using uh, Sub-Q Lupron uh, and or the uh, Oralisa, which is the oral GnRH antagonist to suppress intra-abdominal pelvic endometriosis and we think that can be, be really helpful. And don't forget, LDN, low-dose naltrexone, uh, and CBD oil, uh, omega-3s, again, adding real fat. Remember, all plant oils are industrial oils because you and I never had access to any significant amount 10,000, 50, 100,000 years ago. All of those must be mass produced by crushing seeds and nuts or other plant material. And my bet is they're, they're, they carry a tremendous amount of plant antigens and phytochemicals that damage our body. So real fat, butter, cream, uh, uh, and, and uh, animal fat is really where it's at for most of us. So again, if you're, if you're a vegetarian, cream and butter, a vegan is coconut, and look at hemp seed oil. Uh, I think that's another one that it's gonna grow uh, and better use than 99% than of the others. Olive oil, um, I, I think we drench too much plant oil on, uh, on our, on our, on our uh, foods. Um, I'm not a big fan of lettuce. Contains a tremendous amount of uh, bacteria, yeast, and remember, it's all sugar. And what did everyone add to lettuce? A dressing, which has a lot of sugar, um, and, and I don't think that's so good. Um, let's see, Rachel Long, do you recommend repeating a laparoscopy if a year has passed without transferring? If you found something significant, it may be worth a second look, or either using Sub-Q or Depo-Lupron, or looking at the new Oralisa, which is 150 milligrams once a day, or 200 milligrams twice a day, and we're just now starting to look more and more at that. For some women, and some of the studies really showed that either laparoscopy or a GnRH antagonist or agonist may help in reducing the intra-abdominal pelvic inflammation. So it's obvious that for women, the estrogen is a contributing factor to the inflammatory reactions in the pelvis, which shows up as endometriosis. And my bet for, for endometriomas 
the seed starts on the outside of the ovary, and then as it, it actually invaginates and grows and creates a cyst, but that all comes from the outside. And that inflammation inside the ovary and on the outside diminishes ovarian function because the eggs are technically on the outer uh, uh, coating uh, uh, or the, the outer shell of the ovary. And, uh, and, and that's why those big cysts, when you re remove a lot of ovarian tissue with those cysts, you may be causing some diminished ovarian function. So if they're really, really big, it may be worthwhile just cutting it open and draining it if it's significant in size, or just going ahead and, and treating with IUI or IVF if, it's, if, if you're not taking it out. But I've seen so many where you go in there, you remove it, bingo, pregnancy happens. So talk to your OBGYNs about that. Um, ah, let's see, uh, Sierra Daniel Smith, share the story of how you got into the field and what led you to where you are today. Well, ah, quick and simple story. Let's see, I was, um, I did a lot of pottery and jewelry in high school. I had no idea what I wanted to do when I went to college, so I went to Los Angeles City College where uh, at 1920, I broke a leg and I went to Children's Hospital in Los Angeles and this really cool hippie doctor, I thought, wow, that looks like a very interesting profession, took care of me. I laid in bed for like two months, it was misery, but I started reading a lot. I looked up what it took to become a doctor and I said, boy, I'm in trouble. I don't know if I'm gonna make that. I continue, I continued in pottery, uh, and painting, I still do a lot of that today. Uh, and then I went on to uh, go into uh, medical school at UC Davis, uh, and then my uh, residency, I did a year of internal medicine at all of you, Cedar sinai Sepulveda VA, uh, and, then, uh, and then a year at uh, USC, LA County. I'm, a, I'm a, from Los Angeles, and I really wanted to get back there. And then I went to uh, Colorado to the University of uh, Colorado Health Science Center, and I wanted to go after I graduated from there in 1990, back to Kaiser in Sacramento and worked with Kurt Kluster. And he was doing a ton of, uh, of uh, infertility and I had really no experience in it, but I really began to love it. And uh, I got a, a call if I wanted to do a, a fertility fellowship at Harvard UCLA. And so I, uh, I jumped into it. And, uh, um, I'm really glad to be doing this. Um, it's it's a passion and it feels like a, a hobby. And and I hope everyone can say that each day they're jazzed to get up and go do what they love to do. But I got to tell you, I've learned so much uh, through my many years of doing this. Uh, and I keep on learning newer and newer things. And I'm learning them from things that my patients have brought to me because paleo and keto diets, I learned from, from you guys, Lodos Naltrexone, CBD oil. People ask really great, great questions here and quite often I go like, I don't know, uh, but uh, we're all learning learning together. Um, let's see, JS, uh, Carrie, uh, really grateful. I've got a book out there called The Fertile Secret, uh, taken from Rhonda Burns, The Secret, which is the power of positive thinking. Uh, an intention book, uh, we're working on a new book, which is Keto. Uh, and again, Maria's got some really great stuff. Look at Andres Ianfeld stuff. A lot of paleo keto stuff really help you in the process. I have a 30-year-old daughter, Pilar, soon to be 30. At, she's at uh, Wharton Business School. She went to Princeton, NYU, uh, and now Wharton Business School. She's an artist, dancer, uh, just amazing, and I'm really grateful uh, uh, to uh, uh, just... This life is amazing and we have lots of troubles, remember that, and they're the gifts and treasures of the Creator. Um, and if you just sit back to that each and every day uh, and you're learning from so many uh, others. Melissa White, how you doing? Uh, HSG, hysterosalpingograms. I mentioned the, uh, the antibiotics. We've been treating more and more with a week, enough with the four weeks. Chronic inflammation in our bodies is a factor. Uh, just like they, they treat Lyme disease, which is really tough, either with, with a PIC line or, or long-term antibiotics, we, we need to realize we're just a culture dish. dish. And um, bacteria, yeast, and all sorts of microorganisms love us. Um, and, and when we bring in all this great stuff out there, you know, that just comes along with the food we eat, they're going to like happy as can be. 
uh, another, another amazing place. Uh, Danielle McKenna Blair, ice, uh, Blair cream, B L A I R cream. Uh, I'll have to look that one up. Uh, bacon, eggs, butter, beef, baby is my home run. I call it Kiltz's keto, like a lion. And check out my uh, human Ferrari TEDx talk. I did it on a dog at community college earlier this year. And uh, I've been, been sharing some ideas about this food thing. Uh, you know, we need to break down and just eradicate that uh, pyramid and the my plate. Um, I'm sad to see that, that most of our experts are still recommending a high fruit, fiber, vegetable, and lean meat diet. Uh, it's a diet diet. Um, and the, the live it plan uh, is keto, uh, paleo, even Mediterranean. But remember, it's fresh fats and meat. And I've been looking at a lot of sustainable uh, uh, grazing. Uh, look at that. And, and again, um, not against all plant, uh, just you need to be really looking carefully how you prepare your meals. Uh, you need to become the expert about what you put in your body. And remember, if you're putting shit in your mouth and your mind, you're gonna get shit that's just gonna come out and it doesn't feel very good and it smells really bad. And I apologize if I'm insulting or saying any words uh, that, that might be insulting to uh, anyone. Uh, Danielle asked another question about LDN do for FET. So low-dose naltrexone, naloxone used to reverse opiate overdoses, but in a very low dose, it's been found to be an anti-inflammatory agent. And Phil Boyle uh, has been using it in Ireland forever, has some really great talks on it. I've been very impressed by how it helps. And remember, I'm talking fertility here, but we should be talking about everyone, everywhere, healing their bodies, going kilts is keto or emra keto, um, and, and really making sure that they're listening, watching, reading, really high quality, uh, upbeat, positive things for your mind, your mouth, to master um, your life. Uh, Amberly Ferguson, twin miscarriage in 15, uh, trying to conceive four failed IUIs, four uh, time egg donor, um, and my seeing more for some reason still doesn't open up, and I'm gonna have to get Will to take a look at this, but uh, keto, 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 laparoscopy, hysteroscopy for endo. Uh, if you've donated eggs in the past, you know, there's a, there is a small uh, increased risk of intra-abdominal pelvic inflammation. You know, sticking a needle through the vaginal wall into the ovary can't be without some risk. Uh, you know, this is where uh, 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 saving eggs while you're younger, putting them away, saving sperm even, because remember, as our Ferrari bodies age, we should go this way, it gets more oxidative damage, more reactive damage, and, and so um, I think this, again, Chronic inflammation as we age is gonna get us one way or another. You can't get away from the inflammation, by the way. Um, and so uh, uh, LDN, CBD, keto, paleo, uh, slowing it down. Uh, but I do a lot of intralipids, Lovenox, prednisone, Prograf, or Plaquenil. Uh, Prograf uh, and Plaquenil are used for uh, anti-rejection and anti-inflammation. Uh, don't use them in combination. There's some adverse effects, but separately, and I think there was a question out there in uh, Ananda, uh, Bonnie, and Imani, how you doing? Uh, ask some questions about, are we still using them? And are we using both of them? Uh, again, because I believe everything we're experiencing is, is, is inflammation. And treating inflammation is primary. And there's a great article in the New York Times today about that we're treating cancer with anti-inflammatory drugs uh, and we're targeting them and they're very expensive. The challenge is that people continue to, to put in their, their mouths all the cancer-causing agents, fruit, fiber, vegetables, grains, and, uh, and so they need to continue to get treated. Uh, and again, back to uh, the magic pill, check it out. Uh, keto, keto, keto. And if you haven't read Thomas Seyfried's book, Cancer is a metabolic disorder. Boy, your brain will really be twisted in this one. 
Uh, Otto Warburg figured out a long time ago that glucose feeds cancer. It actually causes cancer. Uh, that's the crazy part. Glycation binds to mitochondria, kills the mitochondria, and if the cell is able not to die, some of them don't, they're cancer. Um, and then uh, Richard David Feynman, the world turned upside down. And uh, you check out our website, cmyfertility.com. Lots of resources there. Uh, check out um, also Mind, Body, Smile, See My Healing Arts uh, for some more stuff. And also uh, Aaron McCullough and Fertile Hope Yoga. Join with her on a regular basis. Do some yoga. Again, we're really all sharing my living room. That's where we're at. And uh, I'm glad to bring you into my home uh, because um, we're all a family. And sometimes we yell at family. We're not so nice to family, but we are family. And we want to share love even when it doesn't feel like you're getting it. Um, but each of us needs to practice that every single day. Uh, adenomyosis, Sarah. Uh, so endometriosis is gland, the endometrial gland-like structures that grow everywhere in the body outside the endometrial lining. The endometrial lining is where an embryo needs to implant, so it needs to be prepared properly for that implantation. Adenomyosis is the same as endometriosis, but it's in the muscle wall of the uterus. It's all just inflammation. That inflammation damages the entire pelvic area. Uh, it's a little harder to treat. I think that uh, Depo-Lupron, Sub-Q Lupron, GNRH, uh, oral GNRH antagonist, or ELISA uh, is, a, is a good try and treatment. Acupuncture, keto, keto, keto. Remember, the uterus is surrounded by the bowels. The bowels are hot, inflamed, methane gas, and they're seeping all this inflammatory uh, particles into the microvascular space of the uterus. So remember, like the lungs and every organ of our bodies, there's a microvascular area that all these antigens and antibodies interact, cause damage, cause endometriosis, because you can get endometriosis in the lungs too, by the way, everywhere in our bodies. That's just uh, inflammation. So um, I'm really grateful to everyone sharing with me tonight, by the way. Share with your friends, your family, uh, anyone who wins the IVF uh, uh, can share it with someone else. You know, everyone should be talking about how do we share and help others in need of egg, sperm, embryos. You know, it's, it really is. There's so many embryos sitting in the cold storage. Uh, we want to help those embryos uh, become babies. Um, and many out there also need a uterus. And if there's someone that's willing to, to carry a baby, a baby for someone else, another gift of life and um, we all need to be thinking and talking about that and learning more and more because remember we're a family right i know it's a little crazy in the process but uh, uh it doesn't seem it sometimes and we all want to run we want to yell we want to chastise and and uh, but again this is such a hard hard journey uh let's see uh mari uh Bellal Kazar, Bilal, Bilal Kazar, uh, recommend fresh day three, transfer 41, 42, unexplained. We do a lot of day three transfers, a lot of blastocyst transfers. In general, if you have four or fewer embryos on day three or fertilized, I recommend a day three freeze all and or transfer. Uh, if you have five or more, then going to day uh, five, six, or seven, um, I try to rest on Sunday, uh, I, I do a lot of, 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 of uh, this on Sunday, obviously, but I'm working to share. But uh, I think in general, a day three, uh, it, it, a day three at least gives that embryo a chance in that uterus. A lot of embryos don't make blast. A lot of people never get a transfer. You and I are not hearing about those in the statistics. And so when you see only those people that get a blast transfer, you think, wow, that's the best way. Not always. And abnormal sperm contributes to failing to blast. And sometimes someone will have great sperm, great eggs, younger, gets nothing fertilized, 
nothing cleaves, they don't get to day three, and then they don't get to day five, and it is frustrating. Listen, if you don't get eggs or embryos or transfer, and we're thinking you should be, we're here to help. And we're gonna help you get to that next cycle one way or another. Um, so so um, let's see here. Oh, so remember, for the guys, what you put in the belly, mouth, the brain, affects every part of your body. Get off the treadmill, stop pumping iron too much, you're just doing the same thing, friction, heat, damage to your bodies. We all like to look good and feel good, right? But you'll be amazed how yoga, meditation, tai chi, and, and remember, why overfill the fuel tank and then have to race on the racetrack thinking, I'm gonna burn some extra fuel today so I can look better. Why'd you put it in your mouth in the first place? But remember, it's really hard not to eat when food is there. And especially if it's a carb, I call it carbocane. It's a killer for all of us. And uh, I know it seems so ridiculous, my conversation, and you know, it's like a mind blowing thing, but there is a zero requirement for a carbohydrate ever to be eaten and a well-balanced diet with lots of variety is deadly. Just like if you had some girlfriends and boyfriends on the side of your partnership, don't do it. Someone's going to get hurt and our bellies hurt the most in the spicy variety of foods that, uh, everyone talks about. And Jessica Stripling, cancer is a metabolic disorder. You are right. And my bet is cancer is a simple explanation. It's caused by carbohydrates. They're the killers. And salad is a straight on carbohydrate. Uh, but my, my uh, uh, radical new story, which is the five causes of our diseases, again, includes the things that they recommend that we've all been recommending as healthy. And if you haven't looked at the hospitals and see what they feed us, you'll realize that it's all sugar. And then they give you a drug to counteract the sugar. Okay. And then they tell you to eat more carbs. And my sister Maria, by the way, that's the other story that my sister Maria had diabetes from age, since age four. I saw blindness, uh, a loss of limbs. I saw heart disease and early death. And I can tell you I believe the American Diabetic Association, heart, and everyone is recommending a high carb diet and it's not good for any of them. And that's the sad part to this story that we don't understand that the carbohydrates are all plant material. I'm sorry, I know it seems crazy, but remember, we are an omnivore, we're capable of eating everything and anything, the liver, must convert carbs and amino acids to fat or you're dead. And insulin has its only effect in the liver is my bet. And if you eat three to five meals a day and seeds and nuts and snacks in between, you're keeping your glucose elevated, your insulin growth factor elevated, you are turning on cancer all day, all day, all day. Now why some people get it and other people don't, I don't know. But this is really not meant to be a cancer talk. It's meant to be an infertility talk but it's really the same thing. That's the amazing, crazy part to this story. It's all the same. Uh, let's see, Bobby Sue, Bowman, how you doing? Pain, inflammation, anxiety, depression, stress, all of those. My belief is anxiety, depression is just another inflammatory disorder. And even miscarriages from chromosomal abnormalities and egg and sperm defects are all de novo due to the inflammation in our bodies. Remember, heating up the, the inner core, deadly and dangerous for all of us. And we all really need to start thinking a little bit differently. And it's opposite, and you're not gonna believe it. It's the world turned upside down. But as I've been doing it for now about seven years, more strict keto, and no exercise in over seven years, uh, it is crazy. Christy Scott, how you doing? Uh, and you know, uh, uh, from Sidehill Farms, uh, Snake River Farms, uh, and, and we buy a lot of uh, 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 duck fat, uh, tallow, and lard. And, and I know it seems so crazy, but if you can't tolerate those things, look at uh, butter oil, uh, and, and then 
for the vegans look at coconut oil and look at hemp seed oil. Remember, marijuana is not good for you. Uh, alcohol is deadly. You know, the recommendations by the, the government is one drink a day for women and two for men. Idiotic, I'm sorry. Uh, but remember, you are a Ferrari or better, actually better, irreplaceable, valuable, expensive, all of us, really, really expensive. And you don't need any potions or pills or supplements or smoothies or shakes or anything. If it's fake, don't put it in your body. Uh, I, I do a lot of water uh, with one of these fizzy things that adds a little carbon dioxide and I like cold. Um, I do a lot of uh, just dark, rich coffee, um, some dark, rich tea, caffeine. I don't think, like anything else, a few cups a day, one or two. Uh, I do add a little bit of, of, of butter to mine from time to time, mostly not. Uh, MCT oil, you can. Uh, Dave Osprey in Bulletproof Coffee. Interesting, his wife in the 40s did keto and suddenly... Bingo, has, a, has another baby. So the stories are really, really compelling. And all of us need to look, look much more out there at kind of the, the process and, and, uh, and how it's all, all uh, working. But our bodies are a well-oiled machine. The GI tract's job is to take stuff from out there and micronize it and send amino acids and simple sugars to the liver, convert them to fat, and then store them all over the body. But when you eat fat, it doesn't go to the liver, it goes to the lymphatics and it's distributed everywhere because it does not need to be refined. And that's the trick and the ticket here. The liver's number one function is to make fat because if you can't make fat, you're dead. And insulin only has its major effects on the liver. All other causes are, are I bet, hyperinsulinemia, not due to resistance, but due to hyperglycemia, because you're eating a ton of salads and fruits and vegetables and seeds and nuts, deadly. 10,000 years ago, you never ate any of that stuff. And remember, most of the food we eat today is man-made. You might not think it's a GMO, but we've been figuring out how to take a little little corn plant, like a rarity way out there to make it this big thing. And the same goes with wheat and rice. Uh, we are slightly taken off track here, by the way, uh, in understanding uh, any of this. So I hope I'm, I'm helping everyone so far. We've got a few more minutes, maybe five more minutes, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. Uh, share the Fertile Fireside chat Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, my intention is to help you conceive naturally, and if not with assistance from your local docs, listen, they are really good out there. They're gonna help you. Talk to them about some of these things we talk about. Uh, it really can be very helpful. Check out on Amazon, uh, The Fertile Secret, uh, and, and how yoga, meditation, prayer, slow it down, keto, 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 it's king, queen, and remember, lions and lionesses not pigs and cows. We're not grazing animals. I'm sorry. I know, I know it seems crazy. I'm not telling you you can't eat them, but if you've got a physical problem, and remember, mental problems are all part of our physicalness, and anxiety, depression really, really, really may be improved tremendously. But in general, anxiety and depression are normal, sadness is normal. Remember, if you're down and depressed, you gotta get up and you gotta fight it out and you gotta move forward. But do it with love, kindness, generosity, and ask for, hey, listen, I didn't fertilize eggs and I didn't get embryos and I didn't get pregnant and what are our ideas? To share the questions out there, by the way. Share them. Uh, let's see, surrogate delivered baby last March for another couple, then I got the itch to have another. Jamie Hathaway, my Seymours are not working so well on this. I apologize to everyone. I, I, I got to get it working a little bit better. Jessica Wardell, how you doing? Fresh over frozen fry VF. 
Uh, we don't do only one or the other. We don't do only blasts. Uh, we individualize. And so uh, if you failed fresh, look at frozen. If you failed frozen, look at fresh. Uh, the more embers you make, we push it to, to, to blast and freeze all. If you're traveling from far away and, and uh, you, you have enough embers to putting back one, I recommend that. Full immune protocol, intralipids, Lovenox, prednisone, Prograf, or Plaquenil, IVIG, leukocyte immunotransfusion, LIT, look it up. Markham Fertility in Toronto or Nogales, Mexico, it seems crazy, but it's the male fertility treatment. The guy's white blood cells are injected under the woman's skin, and for some reason our bodies then accept that embryo. And remember, it's all an immunologic reaction. The fact that we're alive, immunology, we're kept alive, immunology, and we die, immunology. And it's the one area that we know so little about but keep it simple, and I'm gonna tell you, we know nothing about food. We're just, we're selling stuff that looks good, uh, and we've been doing it for thousands of years. We are living better and longer than ever before, no doubt about it. We have a lot of really great benefits to the food we eat. I, my grandparents are all from Italy. I know kilts doesn't sound like one of those, those common Italian names. Uh, Zerilli, Cimentelli, uh, Vittorio, um, and uh, my, my, my grandparents and my parents, my parents lived in 94 on mostly Mediterranean diet. And, uh, but they too had problems with some Alzheimer's, dementia, and chronic diseases that we're all, they say we're all gonna get, but maybe not. Maybe if we all shifted our diets tremendously, we all went keto, paleo, or intermittent feasting, again, the intermittent feasting is one meal a day, rest and digest. Give your body, your bowels a chance to like, like digest and refine. This is the refinery. It's trying to deposit the fat, which is the only fuel. And remember, we're not supposed to be thin. The body is not supposed to be easily to get thin because we'd be dead. And remember, the get, get fat gene is the best gene in the universe and it's the reason we're here. And my bit is again, obesity is not the cause of any disease. It's, it's just what we're putting in the fuel tank and we gotta change it up. I know it's crazy. Uh, let's see, how long would I have to be in New York for an IVF cycle if I live in Seattle? Hello to Seattle from Washington State, Oregon, California, Alaska, Hawaii. We've seen people from everywhere. Um, you have to fly in for the retrieval, stay the night, preferably the next day, and then you can fly out if we're doing a freeze-all cycle. If you're coming and going to stay for a transfer, four to seven days. And if you're going to come and stay for the whole monitoring, and we have a package of 4,500 if you're traveling, which includes the monitoring, uh, then, then uh, you need to be here about two to three weeks. A lot of Airbnb opportunities. Uh, Maplewood, uh, uh, Genesee Grand, a lot of really great, great uh, uh, places to stay. Uh, share with others, hey, I'm coming out. How long do I need to be there? What was it like? Um, and we're always open. Hey, someone said it was the worst place in the universe. We want to know what we all can do to be better. And remember, it's not this, there's no one place that is for everyone. We're human beings, right? We automatically like and dislike certain things for whatever reason, politics, religion, oh, food. Boy, we have our belief systems and we hold on to them. Uh, but clear the mind, be open to all possibilities. And if you're finding yourself in a negative mood and, and just not finding the right place, share the story. Step back a little bit. Maybe even take a month, two or three break. Do some acupuncture, massage, meditation. Go on a journey, go on a vacation. I know this is very difficult for so many. Uh, let's see, uh, Christina, how you doing? Jenny, uh, let's see, I hope, uh, let's see, Jessica Wardell, do you have, recommend fresh or frozen? Oh, uh, let's see, do you recommend fresh over frozen for first IVF again? Um, I already answered that, I think. Uh, Bobby Sue Bowman, how you doing? Uh, can frozen embryos be PGS after the fact? Yes, yeah, so we can actually thaw an embryo uh, biopsy it, refreeze it, 
and, and do the testing. And, and people think I'm against um, vegan, vegetarian, I'm against PGS, P I'm not. I'm just sharing some ideas that maybe we haven't thought about. Opposite and different. Uh, we're here to help everyone. It doesn't matter what you're suffering for, for, from. Uh, it doesn't matter your size, your, your gender, whether you're single, same-sex relationships, male or female. Uh, we're here to help you on your journey of building a family. And really the foundation of life for all of us is family. And we're all family, by the way. Um, and that's the amazing part to the story. Meg, how you doing? My great practitioners and nurses and support team and embryologist, uh, the facility management team, uh, the the financial team, really grateful, amazed, and thankful. And uh, again, just keep on sharing the stories uh, that you're experiencing. Uh, we're gonna be putting together our Kiltz's Keto Cure Book, uh, K2C, a new magazine coming out. Uh, we want your stories, we need them. What was it like for you? What did you do? Hey, I did this and voila, I'm pregnant, whether it was from simply letting go, whether it was from uh, surgery, IUI, IVF, keto, LDN, whatever you think it was, that's what matters to all of us. So, uh, all right, uh, Janelle, Bethany, Deb, Sarah, Angelica, uh, 115 pounds in 45 days, wow. Uh, Dawn, uh, Amanda, CNY Fertility Family, uh, and uh, uh, DFW Fertility, Dr. Bechet, thank you, shout out uh, in uh, Dallas area. Really grateful to all the REs out there helping uh, t for those clients who need to travel and need your assistance, ask, uh, because we think we can do this better as a village or your OBGYN, again. Dr. Rob Kiltz, blessings. See you next Sunday. Uh, enjoy.